Yo, what's up, guys? CJax back with another recap of Raw, aka recap of Jobbers Unleashed. Man, that's what Raw is now. It's basically Jobberville, right? We start off with the Judgment Day doing another sloppy and just boring promo. Finn Balor has been around for, what, 20, 15 years in the wrestling industry, and this dude still can't cut a convincing promo that's any good? Like, this is sad, dude. This is embarrassing. And then Liv Morgan... I'm so done with this Liv Morgan nonsense, bro. All of her promos are literally the same thing. It's a bunch of sloppy, messy, you can barely hear her because her voice just doesn't project on the mic. It's weird. I guess it's just something that happens with the way she speaks. But it's just very bad, man. It's the same stuff. Rhea, I'm gonna beat you. Rhea, Rhea, Rhea. Why don't you shut up? How about that? You know what I'm saying? It's stupid. Liv Morgan is a terrible promo worker. Um, and it everything that just happened in the segment was just a mess. Um, the entrance wasn't that good. Liv Morgan does this awkward <laughs> after everything she says. Like, it's corny. She's never been good, to be honest, but now where she's just being exposed as a jobber, even though she's world champion, she's still a jobber anyways, so that's that. Then this is where things get good. Rey Mysterio comes out, basically trash talks Dom for a couple seconds, and then after that, we get a match with the LWO, which barely gets screen time, um, versus the Judgment Day, right? This match is actually very, very solid. The LWO gets no screen time, but they need to start getting more screen time rather than these has-been old heads like R-Truth, Miz, and like Carlito, and like, this just, you get the point, man. You can just go down the list. Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods. We're going to talk about these old mid-card jobbers later in this show, but anyway, or in this, episode, in this in this review, sorry. But yes, this match was good. There was this really cool shot where they're all like doing these dives out of the ring, all four of the LWO members, and they get it all on, on camera, like, like, it was sick, man. They The LWO brings a new energy and a new vibe to these matches because they're not just old hags struggling to get off moves without botching things. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just a different vibe. But then after this, Rhea and Damian come out. They basically talk to Liv and Or not talk to Liv and Dom, but they beat up JD and Carlito. And then that's it. That, that's really it. It's the same stuff we keep seeing. This match is going to be mid at, at, uh, at Clash at the Castle because it doesn't have any implications on anything. It, it really doesn't right? Damian Priest has beef with Finn Balor, but he's wrestling Dominic Mysterio, who had a nasty hit uh, tonight. He hit his head hard, but hopefully he's okay. But he's fighting Dominic Mysterio, and then Rhea Ripley's going to fight Liv Morgan in a tag match. You should want to fight Liv in a one-on-one -on -one for the world title. It doesn't make any sense if you really understand what's happening. But anyways, after we get off to this, Jey Uso wins another championship contenders match, guys. And guess what? He's going to go to the Fatal 4-Way contenders match for the Intercontinental title in two weeks on Raw. And then guess what? Nothing's going to come from it because Jey Uso is going to continue to lose and lose and lose and lose and lose championship matches. Because no matter how over you are in this current version of the WWE, you will not get the rub unless Triple H hand picks you to be special. You have to be out of this world talented like Roman Reigns in order to get long title reigns or to get like, uh, you know, a, a special position on the roster like he does. And really only he had with the bloodline. When Jay and Jimmy were in the bloodline, they had that rub too. But once they left... You don't have it anymore. You may get super over with the crowd, but you'll never get an opportunity to be a main guy. You never will. It's just not going to happen unless you're like John Cena type talented or rock level or Roman level. You get what I'm saying? There's levels to this. So Jey Uso wins. Nobody cares. Um, speaking of this, though, why are the mid cards of Raw and SmackDown full of jobbers? Every single triple threat qualifying match tonight was just Jobberville. That's all it was. We had Xavier Woods versus Pete Dunne versus The Miz. And it was a botch fest where The Miz and Xavier Woods were moving slower than I would if I was out there. Like, it's embarrassing, dude. What is this? They can't get any younger good mid-carders. That's all you got is just dragging on 50-year-olds like R-Truth and Miz and Xavier Woods, who's probably 40 and old, who barely wrestles anymore. Like, this is sad. But WWE is as hot as it's ever been. But the only options you have to put in this triple threat is Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, Karrion Cross, Pete Dunne, and some other bums. This is embarrassing. It, it really is embarrassing. Where is Dragon Lee? Where is Ilya Dragunov, who you just drafted? I think he's in a match next week. But still, like, you should have other young talent you can pull from than this. This is embarrassing. If not, just throw Carmelo Hayes in here, really, and Andrade. Have them feud for the Intercontinental, but or at least try to fight for it. I mean, I'd rather see that than, than The Miz. The Miz is like 40-something, dude. Come on. Get with it, man.
this mid-card roster on Raw sucks, dude, and on SmackDown, too. But uh, let's move on from that. Drew McIntyre cuts a bad, or not a bad promo, actually a decent promo on CM Punk, basically saying CM Punk says the same thing each week, which, I mean, CM Punk does that now. CM Punk has now been reduced to just some pandering promo worker. Every two minutes, he's pausing to get a reaction from the crowd. Guys, it's a great day to be in Philly. It's a great day to be in New York. It's a great day. It's a great day. It's a great, like, you remember when CM Punk used to go toe-to-toe with The Rock and Cena on the mic? And now he's coming out and basically saying the same stuff every week. It's just sad to see how this dude's fell, fallen off. Not only on the mic, but in the ring. Because he falls out of breath in like two minutes. So, it, it's just dumb. Um, CM Punk basically comes out and slaps Drew McIntyre with the strap. And then McIntyre runs away. And it's the same type of segment we get the last two or three weeks. Because with Triple H now, we get the same segment for three weeks. Then we get a PLE. Then we get a new segment. Then we get a repeat of that same segment for another two or three weeks straight. Then we get another PLE. And then we get a repeat of a new segment for another four weeks. And then we get the SummerSlam or Survivor Series or WrestleMania. And then that's how you get your feud built up to one big moment. It's the same stuff. And it's boring, it's annoying, and it makes the Raws feel pointless. Because honestly, that's what Raw and SmackDown is. They're pointless. Unless Roman Reigns is on the show, or, like, the Bloodline is doing something big, or, you know, Rhea Ripley's actually doing something, or Jey Uso's actually doing something, none of this stuff matters. Sami Zayn isn't even on the show. Braun Breaker was barely on Raw tonight, or last week. He just cuts these one-minute backstage promos with Jackie Redman or Kathy Kelly, and that's it. That's all it is. This is the same stuff. Brunson Reed versus Braun Strowman, though, was a banger. This match brought back the 2000s vibes of wrestling, where people used to just get violent and go crazy and go hardcore, like cars blowing up, getting exploded. You had Undertaker trapping Teddy Long in cars. Like, this brought back those feels, right? Those vibes. Baron, or not Baron Corbin, Braun Strowman goes out, and, you know, him and Braun, or Bronson Reed are having a match. And it, it, they, they brawl all the way out into, like, the outside of the arena. And then Brunson Reed hits a tsunami off of, like, the, the fence onto like a car, like a limo, uh, to Braun Strowman, and it was just a great moment, it was epic, the smoke effects were coming out of the car, like, it was really, really cool stuff, man, I'm glad they did this, because it actually brought back something unique, and did something cool for a character, and I hate to say this, but Brunson, actually, I don't, I don't hate to say this, because I don't have any problems with Brunson Reed, he's actually doing a pretty good job the last couple of months, honestly, he's only been improving, but Brunson Reed is carrying Monday Night Raw, and I hate to be like this, but it's the facts. Like I've been saying, everyone else on this show is a jobber. Not to say that Brunson Reed isn't a jobber, but like, at least he can do something in the ring, and at least his matches have character, and he has a gimmick. No wrestlers now have gimmicks outside on Raw, outside of what, Jey Uso and uh, Brunson Reed, and that's it. No one else has a gimmick. Literally, no one else has a gimmick. What is Damian Priest's gimmick? He can't cut a promo when he comes out and says, I'm the champion, El Rise, El Rise. What's Liv Morgan's gimmick? Huh? Rhea. <laughs> like, what, what, what's her gimmick? I don't know. She doesn't have one. Gunter has a gimmick, at least. You know, he's the ring general, and he's the, the ring is sacred, and he's going to fight for his right every match. He's going to fight hard and bust people's chests open. Like, he's a beast. You get what I'm saying? Everyone, everyone that's actually any good in the company has a gimmick, but the ones who don't have a gimmick are not good. This is why the Unholy Union versus Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill means nothing, because the Unholy Union don't have a gimmick, and if they do, it sucks. So thank you, Brunson Reed, for actually bringing back the vibes of when wrestling was actually great and putting on a very, very good match for what now? The ninth week in a row this dude's put on a great match? I mean, he had a great match with Sheamus a month, a month or two ago. Um, he had a good match with... Who was that? I think he may have had a match versus Ricochet earlier this year that was really good. Um, you know, he had a great match tonight with Bronson or with Braun Strowman. Like, he just knows how to get it done. And Brunson Reed, honestly, is my favorite person on Raw right now behind Jey Uso and Gunter. Because he actually does something. Unlike Randy Orton, which for some reason tonight, he decided he'd come out and basically give us uh, live-action sleeping pills because his promo was boring and drawed out way too long. All it was was saying... Gunter, I'm Randy Orton, I'm a 14-time champion, the world championship means so much to me because I'm Randy Orton, and I'm the youngest world champion ever, and I'm going to win that world title with the RKO, that's all the promo was, he could have done that in like a minute or two, but instead it took 8 minutes to 10 minutes just to tell that story, and it wasn't even a story, it's just dumb, 
all these promos now from baby faces on raw and smackdown are just pandering promos randy orton pauses after saying thank you rhode island for being such a great crowd then he pauses again after saying i'm the youngest world champion then he pauses again after saying i've been doing this for 20 years and i've been fighting back since my back injury to get back in the ring which obviously it's amazing that he overcame the back injury and is now able to wrestle again for however much more long he's got but come on these pandering pops and pandering promos need to be stopped dude they need to stop and then uh after this Orton promo, I mean, I'm sure there was something else that happened in here, but I don't really care about any of that. Um, I do, Oh, yeah, we did have a damage control match earlier which versus the, the Pure Fusion Collective, which I don't even need to review that. You guys can just assume what happened in that match. It sucked. We don't need to get into that. Um, and then we ended up with Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable, which was overbooked nonsense. And this match was average. This is an average match. It's like a 6 out of 10 match. Um, you know, Chad Gable has had way better matches with Sami Zayn this year. He had an amazing match with Gunter. He had a great showing at the Money in the Bank. Like, this dude is known for putting on very good matches. So the fact that this was just average is embarrassing. Uncle Howdy's built up to for months and months and months. And all we get is this singles match on a throwaway episode of Raw in Rhode Island, where the crowd sucked all night, by the way. Like, what? By the way, WWE needs to stop with this, oh, it's sold out. WWE, we're selling out shows, we're selling out shows. Sellouts only matter when you're in notable arenas. Like, if you go to Madison Square Garden and you sell out, it's like, okay. If you go to Wells Fargo Center and you sell out, it's like, oh, wow, that's nice. If you go to the Allstate Arena in Chicago and you sell out, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Which, for the first four months of the year, they were selling out shows in those big venues with like 15,000 to 20,000 people. Why? Because Roman and The Rock were pretty much on every other show. And Rock was on every week, and then Roman was on every other week, and they were doing great builds to Mania. But since then, they haven't done anything. You're in Rhode Island. I don't even think there is an arena in Rhode Island that has more than, like, maybe 7,000 people, if that. That's why the crowd probably sounded so dead tonight. You know what I mean? No one's actually going to these venues. It's a 7,000-person venue. You know, like, like who cares? Oh, you sold out 7,000 people. I'd hope so. Like, what? That's the bare minimum. If you're as hot as you say you are, WWE's on the hottest streak ever right now. Okay, so you should be selling out 7,000 arenas. But anyways um uncle howdy versus chad gable is a joke chad gable goes from cutting great promos week after week and doing great stories and having great matches to now he's jobbing out to uncle howdy on raw in rhode island like this is a joke chad gable's better than this he's a better wrestler than bro dallas will ever be and i'm tired of wwe basically using bray wyatt's death for notoriety and for moments that's what they're doing Every single thing that happens with the Wyatt Six, it's like, wow, you can really feel Bray Wyatt's presence. Wow, this must be so awesome for Uncle Howdy and Bo Dallas for this happen to, you know, to honor Bray Wyatt. Wow, man, a Bray Wyatt would be so proud. Wow, man, I miss Bray Wyatt. Wow, man, I so I feel so bad for Bo Dallas right now. Like, listen, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt. He was, he was very interesting and he was very creative. And I grew up with Bray Wyatt, right? I'm not just one of these people saying, oh my gosh, rip Bray Wyatt, man, and they've never seen him wrestle. I watched Bray Wyatt every moment of his career pretty much until I stopped watching wrestling in 2016, right? I saw the Wyatt, the Wyatt family come up and fight the Shield at Elimination Chamber. Like, I saw all that stuff. But Bray Wyatt's legacy should stay with Bray Wyatt. I don't, like, I don't need this idea of the Wyatt Six coming out and just, oh, we're going to ride the coattails of Bray Wyatt's legacy and his creations to make our own characters to quote-unquote honor him, but they're making these fake segments backstage where these people are fake crying for Bray Wyatt, a guy who actually died and who meant something to people. Like, this is ridiculous. Bray Wyatt should not be getting, you know, uh, exploited for viewership and for, and for moments and segments. This is stupid. It, it's stupid. I hate to say it, but it's stupid. And the Wyatt Six is dumb. Let's say that Uncle Howdy wins another match versus Chad Gable. Who cares? Uncle Howdy will never be a world champion. If Jey Uso as over as he is and he's not getting a world, he's not even getting a mid-card title, what do you think Uncle Howdy and the Wyatt Six are going to get? Oh yeah, nothing. So stop it. It's a joke. The Wyatt Six has no meaning anymore and supernatural characters in WWE just don't work anymore. They don't. Unless you're doing it like The Undertaker where you show up once a year and have a match but you still cut promos in between and build up to matches. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't do that with this with this faction. This is dumb stuff. And it's overbooked. The Dexter Loomis and these other jobbers come out of nowhere. And it's like, nobody cares about this stuff, man. At least I don't. So, Raw sucked. Um, it wasn't as bad as, like, the Raw two or three weeks ago that I said was the worst ever. Or the one last week, which was also pretty bad. But um, this is a bad episode of Raw. I'd give it, like, a 3 out of 10, maybe. I mean, Brunson Reed and Jey Uso and, like, that that's pretty much it. They saved this Raw from being, like, a 1. Um, Andrew McIntyre, too, his promo was decent. But, yeah, um, bad episode, a lot of issues. Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore, man. One love, uh, bad episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it, I guess. I don't, I don't know. If you didn't enjoy it, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate the feedback and everything. And, uh, yeah, have a great night, man.